Hi, kids. Hello, sir. What are you up to? We're doing target practice. We're going to be real good shots. Someday, we'll get those pigs who shot Dad. How awful. These children must have seen the cleanup brigade shoot their father out there. Poor kids. And how is the target practice going? Bad at the moment. We need a real target, or we'll never be able to hit those soldiers. Yeah, we need a better target. Hey, quit talking to that rat. He's not one of us. You know what mom and dad say about the people in the camp. Leave my brother alone. Get lost, rat. Yeah, you're not one of us. Get lost, rat. I'm not going to pick them up. I'm sure it took the kids a long time to collect all those rocks for their target practice. Besides, I bet my aim is worse than theirs. A pile of stones and pebbles. That's the kids' entire arsenal. It looks like they do just fine with them. A primitive target built by those kids. Although, from what they say, it's starting to get too boring for their target practice. That must be that strange phenomenon in the sky I've heard people talking about in the camp. The one that appeared just after the Great Wave. God is urging his angels to punish us through the wound. It says in the notebook I found in Rod's trailer. One of the many sentry towers surrounding the camp. And inside each and every one of them, there's a sniper armed to the teeth and itching to shoot something. The view from here is incredible. Until you get a look from this height, it's impossible to get an idea of the true size of the refugee camp. No, here comes that sensation again. It's like floating in a dense liquid while everything around me is transformed. Good God, I think I'm starting to lose my mind. Better not. The boys will be glad to have another target to practice their marksmanship, but on the first hit, this bottle would shatter into a thousand pieces. Better not. Knowing what's inside that room, I have no interest in going in. Hello again. They shot him! Those pigs shot my husband! And what are the three of us gonna do when my husband's gone? We'll lose everything. The house, the money, our privileges. The three of you. I've already talked to your two boys out there. Those two brats wear me down with their antics. I have to chase after them all the time. They're just children. What do you know, you rat? I have to run after them all the time. Those kids don't give me a minute's peace. It's exhausting. I should be going. Give me that pass for getting out of the camp. I don't trust. First bring me food for my... Okay. A thick wall of scrap metal. Debris and rusty metal surrounds this place on all four sides. It's a good 20 feet high. I can't believe it manages to stay up. The wreck of an old ice cream truck. I don't reckon it's going anywhere without its wheels. It looks like the enormous skeleton of a beached whale. This noisy electric generator seems very old and decrepit, but it works. Cars, machinery, steel, cement, even the skeleton of an old construction crane. This place is a veritable cemetery of the industrial age. Mr. Sleepyhead. Excuse me? What did you call me? You're Mr. Sleepyhead. I saw you sleeping in Colin's trailer. I'm so glad you're awake now. I wasn't asleep. I was sick for a long time in that trailer. No, you weren't sick. You were sleeping. Like a big brown bear, Sir Sleepyhead. Sometimes I used to watch you sleeping in Rod's house, and you would grunt in your sleep like a bear. 
A great big lazy bear, Mr. Sleepyhead. But I'm glad you're awake now. I like your voice. You sound like a knight in a fairy tale. Mr. Sleepyhead? No, that's not my name. I'm Michael. No, you're just trying to fool me. You're Mr. Sleepyhead. My name is Rose. There's something odd about this girl's behavior. It's true that she's very young, but she talks like a little girl. Nice to meet you, Rose. So, do you know Rod and Colin too? Of course. I go over to their house a lot. Well, when they let me out of the van, that is. Rod and his wife have been very nice to me. Sometimes they let me play with Colin. We're very good friends. Are you a friend of Rod's and Colin's too, Mr. Sleepyhead? Yes, I'm friends with them too. Do you want me to tell you a secret, Mr. Sleepyhead? Of course. I have your old clothes. The ones you were wearing when Rod and his wife found you. I have them in the van. They were going to throw them away, but they gave them to me to wrap my baby in. It'll be cold now that winter's coming. Your baby? You have a baby, Rose? Yes, I have a baby. But he's not with me right now. He got lost. Have you seen him? Do you know where he is? I have another secret to tell you, Mr. Sleepyhead. Back in the van, Rose. Now. Move your ass. Get in there. Another secret? Just a minute. Wait! Get in that van, Rose. It's a very important secret, Mr. Sleepyhead. Something about you. Something about before the great wave. But first I have to find my baby. Have you seen him? Come on, Rose, you heard me. You don't want to get us mad now, do you? I have to go. Goodbye, Mr. Sleepyhead. Poor girl. She's obviously mentally ill. She's just a little girl in a grown-up's body. And you, if you want to go in there with her, you got to pay like everybody else. <laughs> Hey, you guys. You talking to us? That poor girl's not right in the head. She acts like a little girl. How can you people be so unscrupulous? Rose is an adult. She's earning a living. Like we're all trying to in this camp. Mind your own business, pal. You're abusing a poor, disturbed girl. Us? Taking advantage of Rose? Us? You want to insult us? We're giving her room and board. She's got nothing to complain about. But she's got to work. That's the only thing we ask of her in return. That's the way things work now. Bring us the money, then you can get in the van with her. Hey, do us a favor and spare us all that sanctimonious crap from the old world, pal. Don't waste our time. Let me into the van. I just want to talk to Rose for a few minutes. Of course, it's none of our business what you want to do with her. But if you go into the van, you gotta pay the price. Got any money on you? No, I don't have any on me. Then come back when you do and quit bothering us. We have a very busy schedule, you know? The girl said something about a secret involving me. Something from before the Great Wave. It seemed important. But what is it? Maybe it was a product of her madness. But I need to talk to her inside that van to get some answers. I'll come back with the money. Now that sounds much better. I see that we're starting to speak the same language. Is that an electric generator? I've seen very few of these around here. Yeah, in this hellhole, you can count them on the fingers of one hand. Nowadays, you can't buy generators like this anywhere. And with the power grid all blown to hell, you can bet that one of these is worth more than your life. We use it to light Rose's room. We like to protect our, uh, investments. So don't get too close to it. These things are very fragile, and they have a bad habit of getting lost. Now, we wouldn't want that to happen, would we? What exactly do you think you're doing? Hey, pal, touch that generator and you're a dead man. My partner and I don't kid around when it comes to defending what's ours. That clear? Extremely. I was just curious and wanted to see this relic up close. You don't have to get nervous. It seems that these things became very scarce after the Great Wave, so they're invaluable. This one's really old. 
It's nothing short of a miracle that it still works, but it does. Better not. If these guys are unpleasant sober, I had to imagine them drunk. What exactly do you think you're doing? Just try putting those grubby little fingers on those coins, and we'll chop them off and use them for poker chips. Hey, will you quit bothering us already? Dozens of stored drums stack chaotically. What the devil could be in them? And who might want to keep them here? Dented, dirty, and in pretty bad shape. In this corner of the camp, there are drums stored everywhere you look. Hello. Hello, son. Would you like to get a little closer to the fire? Thanks, mister. This is a rather isolated part of the camp. What are you doing here? Well, I'm waiting. That's all. Just waiting. You're waiting. And what is it you're waiting for exactly? Nothing in particular. The usual. For the fire to go out. For sunrise. For it to get cold again. I'm waiting for something to change. Or for everything to stay as it is. I'm just waiting. You're too young to understand. It's starting to get cold. Where's your tent? Or your trailer? Yes, I had a tent once. They issued me one when I decided to enter the refugee camp after the Great Wave. The trailer was out of the question. They went to the families with the best contacts. Ah, you know how it is. Even in purgatory, some people are more equal than others. You say that you decided to enter the camp. Does that mean that people weren't forced to come here? No, oh, no. Of course not. Why would they have to force us? The catastrophe hit the city hard. Those of us who had lost our homes were invited to come here. In principle, it was temporary, just until the authorities got the situation under control and started rebuilding. We used to have food, water, and a place to sleep. But now it's more like a prison camp than a refugee center. What happened? I don't really know. I well, guess something went wrong. The new house and the promises never got built. And in the end, the army seized control of the camp. The food ran out, and then the water supply. Nobody bothered to replace them. Seems like our lives didn't matter anymore. I see. In time, things in here started to get very ugly. There were riots, uprisings. And the army decided to close the gates of the camp without any notice. One day they decided that no one could enter or leave here. Well, actually people still could uh, enter, that is. Now this is where anyone who gets in the way in the city ends up. Or anyone they don't know what to do with. So, this has turned into something like a concentration camp? That's right, son. That's exactly what it is. You know, it's funny. I remember when my father told us about the war in Europe, about all the persecution, deportations, those overcrowded cattle cars. That all sounded to us like an old movie, an old horror movie. And look at us now. I guess some things never change. They just stop being visible for long enough for us to forget about them. And where's your tent now? Uh, it was stolen from me a while back. They fetch a good price on the black market now. Stolen? But how could anyone... <laughs> you seem to be new in the camp, am I right? These things happen nowadays. It's best to take things as they come. The reality of the new world is very simple, son. The soldiers and the moles do whatever they like on this side of the fence. And the hunter and his men run the black market and all the dirty rackets. I suggest you memorize all this. The hunter? I've exchanged a few words with him, but I hardly know him. Yes. The man who protected me during all the shooting. 
He seems like someone with good connections and some answers. Could he know anything about the drug for treating the dissolved? Do you know where I can find him? You can find him in those barracks at the back. That says, well, let's say it's his logistics office. Now, the hunter is very dangerous. Watch your step around him and his men. I happened to meet his father when he was young. Ah, oh, he was a violent, degenerate son of a bitch. A real asshole. And I'm afraid his son has followed in his footsteps. Let's talk about something else. It's starting to get cold. Yes, I try. Let's talk about... So tell me, is there any way to get out of the camp? I'm sorry, son. The only way to get out of this camp is to know someone important who can pull strings for you. Or to become a camp mole. Those traitorous scumbags have gate passes. Hmm. I see. I'm not surprised you want to get out of this shithole. You've no doubt got something to do or someone to find out there. Well, they say things are better in the city. That there's order and that things are starting to function again. But who knows? Well, at least they have Reverend Blake and the consolation of Suicide Park. Suicide Park? What's that? Nah, just a song that drifts into the refugee camp from the other side of the fence now and then. And the first dark stars come out to hang from the sky. We could sit and count them together, you and I, when the sun departs from Suicide Park. I'm sure you still have some hopes, some dreams. I'm afraid you're... Just too young to understand it. Who's Reverend Blake? He's a preacher. He sometimes comes from the city to bring us a little comfort. Now, some people make jokes about him, but many of us believe that he's a prophet. You should hear him speak sometime. His words etch themselves deeply into your soul. That's why he has so many followers inside and outside the camp. And what was the extent of the Great Wave's impact? How are things beyond the city? Truth is, I couldn't tell you. In the first days, the chaos was so overwhelming that no one worried about anything beyond their own backyard. We victims were disoriented, cut off from the world. Then I came into the camp, and uh, news from far off places doesn't reach this prison. I'm afraid you'd have to leave here to get the answer to that question. I should be going on my way. Have a pleasant wait, mister. Okay, here goes. It's impossible to budge these drums at all. I don't know what they contain, but whatever it is, it weighs a ton. Someone placed a bunch of those rusty drums up against the wall. Ugh, they smell like liquor and industrial oil. Oh, Jesus, the cocktail of odors is nauseating. Although it seems shoddily and hastily built, it's surprising to see a brick and mortar building in the midst of all the trailers and hovels in the refugee camp. No doubt this must belong to someone important or with very good contacts in here. It's a thick cable that runs along that building's roof, but I can't see it very well from here. It's too high. This bright light leaves no doubt about where the entrance to the building is. There are some insects fluttering around it that end up getting scorched by the heat and dropping dead. the background music for the establishment. The speaker is cranking out a dreary, droning country song, and it's getting on my nerves. Stain from spilled drinks, rings from glasses and rust. The bartender looks out from the other side, seemingly bored and apathetic. 
the cheerful patrons of the bar. I suppose the gray substance one of them is sipping is liquor, but I can't tell what kind. I don't think he can either. Someone went to all the trouble of taking the hood off an old Corvette and dragging it in here, just to turn it into a tacky bar table. What are you having, pal? Nope. I'm afraid I don't have any cash on me. That's no problem here. We don't only accept cash, we also barter. We accept anything of value. <laughs> that excludes checks, naturally. Interesting place. Are you the owner? No, pal. Don't get the wrong idea. I only work here. This belongs to the hunter, like every other business enterprise here inside the camp. He's the head honcho. I see. What do you sell here? Anything you can eat or drink. Anything that fits into a box or a bottle. For other types of goods, talk to the hunter directly. What do you need? Liquor, tobacco, food? I could use some food. You're in luck. We have some of these emergency food rations the authorities distributed among the inhabitants of the camp in the first weeks after the Great Wave. You know, a bunch of them just uh, happened to fall into our hands. What do you have to offer in exchange? Hmm. Would a bottle of liquor do? Let me see. It's a good brand of whiskey, but the bottle's been open, and there's a lot missing. I'd take it, but I'd need something more. I'm afraid I have nothing more that can interest you. Too bad, pal. Come back with something more, and the food's yours. You know how it works. We accept everything. Cash, jewelry, liquor, tobacco. Mike, my friend, it's nice to see you again. Uh, hi. Guys, this is my friend Mike. He's new around here. We met at one of the cleanup brigade's latest parties. Isn't that right, dude? Pull up a seat and have a drink. We like to be hospitable to newcomers. Something tells me I shouldn't accept that drink. That it's not a good idea. Not anymore. Uh, no thanks, I don't drink. Okay, Mike, whatever you say but I'm not accustomed to people turning down a drink. At least, not in my own establishment, in front of my men. So tell me, what brings you here? A friend of mine is in a bad way. I need to know if there's a drug that can help the dissolved, and how to get it. A friend of yours, huh? Friendship is important, Mike. The camp is a very tough place. And you have to be loyal to your people. I like your gesture. Do I know this person? Hmm. No, I don't think so. I see. Well, look, dude, I've heard something about that cure, but I don't know if it's true or just a camp legend. Sometimes desperation leads to wishful thinking. You know how it is. But if that drug exists, I can think of only one place you'd be able to find it. Where? There's a small medical center on the outskirts of the city. It's more like a pharmaceutical warehouse, but it's heavily guarded. I bet my bottom dollar that's where they keep anything that valuable. Maybe you should take a look at that building. If you can find a way out of this hellhole, that is. And I can't help you with that. You know I like you, dude. Let me give you a piece of advice. Stay away from those untouchables. From the dissolved. They won't bring you anything but trouble. What more can you tell me about the Dissolved? Only what the authorities say. And that's all I need to know. The disease is fatal. And they say you can catch it just by breathing next to one of those untouchables. That's why they have to get rid of them as soon as possible. Have you ever seen one of those poor suckers die, dude? No, I haven't. Well, you're lucky, Mike. I don't recommend it. It's a horrible spectacle. It goes something like this. After weeks of drifting in and out of their trances, something happens inside their bodies. Something fails all of a sudden. The pain makes them kick and scream like pigs in a slaughterhouse. Then their flesh begins to melt, to become liquid. Do you understand, Mike? That's why they gave it that name. They literally dissolve. But that's terrible. Oh, those poor people. On the contrary, dude. Those bastards spread the plague. It's them or us. Understand? Anyway, you know how it works. 
The cleanup brigades tend to be more than generous with responsible citizens who help them with their mission of tracking down the dissolved. And can't you get hold of some of that drug for me? I don't get mixed up in things like that, dude. The army has made it very clear. Helping or hiding the dissolved will be severely punished. Not even collaborators are free from reprisals. You saw what happened to that mole. Those pigs are ruthless about this. What are you talking about, those pigs? That's camp slang. The soldiers, the cleanup brigades. The inhabitants of this shithole call anyone with a rifle and a uniform a pig. They can blow your head off right on the spot with impunity. Tell me, why do they call you the hunter? That's a good question, Mike. You know my real name is Hank, but no one calls me that anymore. Now I'm the hunter, because I can find you what you want, when you want it. You know, it doesn't matter where it is, how fast it runs, or where it tries to hide. The new world gave me a new name and a new life. A new life? Yeah, a new life. It's hard to explain, dude. But I think, in a way, you and I are similar, Mike. That's why I like you. Let me explain it to you. It was the Great Wave. The Great Wave that changed and purified everything. The old world was a messy, complicated, and unjust place. After the Great Wave, everything became crystal clear. When all the old laws disappeared, only one rule remained. You gotta do what you gotta do. It's that simple. And that's the universal law that puts each of us in our rightful place. Do you follow me? Hmm. You gotta do what you gotta do. Sounds like a handy way to justify anything and everything. Even the indefensible. Yes, Hank. I follow you perfectly. I knew it. I knew you'd get it straight off, Mike. But don't call me Hank. I told you, that guy died in the Great Wave. I should be going now. Fine, Mike. You're welcome anytime. Remember, dude, here we can get you whatever you need. No questions asked. Oh, <laughs>